-hmm. So, how much are you looking forward to going into space then? Very much, yeah. Thank you. It's a, it's a really exciting time. I think everybody who's been selected this round is really looking forward to everything that ESA has planned over the next decade or two. Absolutely. So what are the plans? Do you know yet? Well, we're very much still involved with the International Space Station, the ISS, and that will be continuing until 2030. And then looking to the longer term, you may be aware you spoke about um, it being the anniversary of the Apollo 17 mission. But actually, our first attempt to go back to the moon is now on its way back home, having successfully done a couple of flybys of the moon. That's the Artemis 1 mission. And from Artemis 1, which is an unmanned crew, an unmanned uh, expedition, we'll be starting to do crewed missions and getting both um, women, Americans, Europeans, lots more people on the moon to do science. You could be the first person born on the island of Ireland to go to space. Um, that would be a historic moment, wouldn't it? How does that make you feel? Yes, that's right. Yeah, really proud and really proud in, in so many senses to be to be expanding that group of people who are able to go into space, obviously pushing for diversity and encouraging STEM has been a, a really big a really big thing this selection round and I'm really proud to be to be a woman to be born on the island of Ireland to be to be part of this process yeah um, today marking the uh, beginning of the 50th anniversary can't believe it of Apollo 17 which was I think the final mission wasn't it um, in NASA's Apollo program um, what what did you know about that I mean I'm sure you weren't even born when that happened um, but w when you look back at uh, this sort of well this is actually the first mission wasn't it this is not uh, uh, Apollo 17 but when you look back at man on the moon um, do you want to be the first woman on the moon <laughs> Well, of course, I think we all we all dream of going to the moon. I'm sure that the first woman on the moon will be an American woman. That will be um, a part of a NASA mission as part of Artemis III um, or a joint NASA ESA mission, but it will be an American woman. Um, and that's going to be fantastic to see the first woman on the moon. And I'll be very proud if I have an opportunity to go to the moon and be the first European or the second European or as long as we're, we're doing everything we can out there, learning as much as we can, that's going to be great. Fantastic. Um, why has it taken 50 years for us to um, think about putting a human back on the moon? It's, it's a good question. And actually, things have changed a lot in the last 50 years. Of course, Apollo has really set the scene for everything we want to do now in terms of those initial investigations. And actually, we've come to the stage where we're still analyzing rocks or samples brought back from the Apollo missions, but with a brand new technology, technology that didn't exist 50 years ago. So now we know that, for example, there are volatiles, there is thought to be frozen water in the south pole of the moon, in these permanently shadowed regions. And now we have the technology and the knowledge to go to a different part of the moon and really start to explore something different. Um, was it programmes like Apollo that attracted you to uh, want to go into space? Or is it something that you've always wanted to do since you were a little girl? Of course, Apollo has been absolutely inspirational. I think there's a number of factors that really attracted me into the space sector and particularly to becoming an astronaut. My current job as an astrophysicist does focus on space, but it's a completely different space science to what we will do as astronauts. But of course, um, everything that happened 50 years ago is, is completely, completely inspirational. And I hope that we can do that now for the next generations and the next few years. Fantastic. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you very much.